What a disaster. I was hoping to go to Margate, but it looks like I'm stuck here fixing this now. No shops that stock anything that's non-standard. And... Now there's a view from your loo that you don't see every day. Hi, I'm Daz and she's B. We've had our motorhome since June last year and have already had many adventures and made plenty of maverick mistakes on our travels. Our dreams of owning a home in France were shattered after Brexit. Then we failed to move somewhere more rural after our house sale fell through in the UK. We bought Stampy, our 10-year-old motorhome, in the hope that we can live a life less ordinary and explore the UK and Europe with our kids and our greyhound Sammy whenever we can. Please join us as we try new things, make memories as we escape in the motorhome. So this guy's all tuckered out. So he's worn out after two massive walks today. I bet he'd love it out there. Now, this is the slightly worrying thing. This is the view from the edge of our lounge. I'm so grateful it's not windy. Anyway, enough looking at the nice stuff. I've got to strip that sink again. our problem this wonderful joint which allowed me to fit the tap yesterday because it spins round and around it's now decided it's going to leak everywhere and there's some water down the back so I've thrown some kitchen roll that I can reach but I can't really I think hopefully most of the water has made its way out it's sort of dry in some of the other areas this tea towel is absolutely soaked which probably means this is going to blow Right, let's try and wring that out and put it another one down. What a disaster. I was hoping to go to Margate, but it looks like I'm stuck here fixing this now. We decided to visit one of the most mysterious places in the world. Discovered in 1835, the Grade 1 listed subterranean world contains 4.6 million faded and blackened shells that cover every surface of the 2,000 square foot cavern but its age and purpose remain unknown. Yeah. So when, when it was first made, it would have been very, yeah, very bright. Green. They've lost their colours over the centuries. <laughs> was it a folly? A prehistoric calendar of the stars? A witchcraft base or perhaps a meeting place for Freemasons or the Knights Templar? Something similar has been found under Rome's Palatine Hill, so it could have been a link to the Phoenicians who were found in colonies in the second half of the first millennium BCE. The gas lights that were installed in 1932 blackened the once colourful shells. A cleaning test was undertaken, but they discovered that the shells had faded to white underneath the soot. There are winding passageways, arches and what look like altars, and a shaft that allows daylight into the structure. We found it to be a very eerie experience. Next on the agenda was the famous Dreamland Amusement Park, first used for rides in 1818. After going into decline in the early 2000s, Dreamland was sold in 2005 and almost became residential. Then as objections were raised, the place fell into a state of disrepair. After massive amounts of funding, the park reopened in 2015, then again in 2017 after going into administration. Well, I've got five minutes to myself. Right, I've lost them all in the mirror maze. Yay! The scenic railway roller coaster, which burnt down three times and blew down once, is now Grade 2 listed. All oh, made out of wood. It reminds me of one that we went on in Holland. Ghost train. So Margate seems to be full of interesting little boutique shops and businesses, which suggests that there's enough tourists around to support that kind of stuff, which is great. It feels a lot like Hastings. I think B and I both said that now. We were sad to see a dead dogfish on the beach on the way back to Stampy, but then spotted Droit House, now the Thanet Tourist Information Centre, which was destroyed during the Second World War before being rebuilt. So after the water leak disaster earlier on in Stampy, and the fact we've got another whole day in Stampy without water, dinner was an easier option. Sorry, Papa John. Well, we managed to demolish three pizzas. Yeah, we're now contemplating going and getting water. Oh, poor Dad. Oh. Going to go and get some water from Morrison's up the road because the wastewater pipe works are okay. It's our cold water in that's messed up. So, and there's no because it's like a 12 mil pipe or something weird like that. Of course, there's no shops that stock anything that's non-standard, and 
as weird as it is, Margay, as busy as it looks, it doesn't seem to have any normal shops here. So I don't think there's any screw fix, there's no sort of camping or caravanning things nearby. <laughs> so we'll just make do, won't we? It'll be fine, it'll be fine. Do things break in the motorhome all the time? Is that normal, do you think? It's like, well, it's Feels like we've had a, one a step run of forward it. and one back, isn't it? Anyway, the heat is mm. working for the second time. Is the fridge still working? Yep. Yep, so fridge and heater, happy days. There you go. But and the pump's not working brilliantly. And the pump. Keep, mm. keep holding the wires. What's, so that's work. an unrelated problem? Yeah, it just decided to stop working. But if I fiddle with if I fiddle with the wires in the right way, mm. it comes on again. Mm. To then pump loads of water down the back of the oven. I'm absolutely loving. You can't see it, it just looks bleak and white. Behind me is the ultra still North Sea and a very similarly coloured sky. And it just looks like a painting. But yeah, with all these things going wrong, with this giant leak and now the pump stopping working, you know, we should just go home. But there's a reason why we're not going home, because um, Daz is about five minutes away from a friend he hasn't seen for 10 years. And chances are their worlds won't collide again if we were to go home now and go, oh, we'll come back again another time. So it's really important for him to see his friend. <sighs> it's not how I envisage my Friday night to be going but <laughs> I've got to take this dog for a walk. So even though Broadstairs was absolutely picturesque and very quaint. Margate, a very different vibe, much bigger. You've still got the gorgeous old town and lots and lots of independent shops and cafes, which are busy, bustling. For all the right reasons, you've also got other patches of the town that are just like a regular, slightly run-down seaside town. But what I've really loved about Margate is the fact that we've been able to park five minutes from the wonderful Turner contemporary gallery all day for free and all night for free as well as you are allowed to and there were spaces really remarkable and having to spend some time going around and learning about it today learning about Turner and learning about the different people that have lived in Margate it's been it's been really interesting probably the most interesting thing I've learned today is about the power of the horseshoe crabs blue blood and how creating a synthetic version would be excellent because the horseshoe crab is of paramount importance when testing all vaccines and actually their involvement in the development of vaccines and the safety of vaccines has saved vivisection and saved rabbits lives around the world too i might not get, be getting all of my facts right but just hearing about how important horseshoe crab's blood is because of the way it behaves when it reacts to diseases i think it goes jelly like i think that's incredible so best learning thing of the day didn't think I'd learn that when I came to Margate. Woohoo! Anthony Gormley is still under the water, or one of the hundred figures. Hope he's happy under the water. Watch him go. <gasps> Amazing! Oh, oh. Here's one of these purchases, and we're thinking it'll go in there. Yeah. Oh, so it's Saturday morning, and the misery is set in. We can't really tolerate anything else going wrong, and the only reason why we're fighting it out is so that Dust can see his good friend who hasn't seen for a long time. Sammy decided to nibble on some of the melamine that's right next to his bed. And that of course sends Daz do Lally because it's stuff that he will find very difficult. It's not impossible to replace. So that on top of the pump not working, meaning that we are getting no water and the cassette toilets not working. And of course the leaking tap, all of that 
is making this trip minus fun. Come on, we've got to get some luck with this thing surely soon. I've just seen the disused Lido and some of the other buildings that have fallen into disrepair on the seafront. I mean, Margate is big, so there's a lot of regeneration that needs to go on here. And I can see that they've made a start of it. It'd be, it'd be a shame to let this just all fall to rack and ruin. And looking at where the famous Lido once was, where my mum had holidayed as a child, you couldn't help feeling that the regeneration task was almost impossible. So once again we find ourselves buying bottled water. Good thing is, when this has run out, I've been able to sanitise my hands and fill the bottle off again from inside there. Now extracting water out of Stampy. Now there's a view from your loo that you don't see every day. While Daz was faffing about, I was warming up in the Margate coffee shed. Dog friendly, well priced cakes, and even Sammy got a couple of treats. And there was plenty of lovely Margate knickknackery to buy. And as we made our way back to Stampy, the eerie head of Anthony Gormley's cast appeared amongst the waves. Eek. So the caveat to our free park up was the superb turning area at the end of the promenade, which could be seen in one of two ways, a glorious canvas or a blooming eyesore. Well, I've got to get in now, have I? I'd love to stay. way to Whitstable. The sun has come out after a really blustery morning. Certainly blew the cobwebs away and hopefully we'll have some sunny hours in another new seaside town. We are stopping halfway for lunch at a place called the Culver which has a sort of medieval church in Roman fort and it's just, you can see it, I think part of that two blocks over there and some pointing at something completely different. <laughs> Silent Trouble farm. Is, we're a long way from over there and it seems to be a single track road all the way there. It's a really nice little single track road but probably not much fun to drive around. Here we are in Reculva Country Park and we're allowed our own space. Now, Daddy, I'm wondering whether you're parking across two spaces. Yeah, you're, you're supposed to have the, <laughs> you're supposed to have the post in the middle of your bonnet, not be in between the boats. But yeah, I see your logic, I see your logic. Always nice to see they've considered motor vehicles. So there's Stampy with the monuments you've come to see in the background. What a lovely bit of sun we've got here compared to Margate just down the road. So I won't go over what went on, went on last night, but yesterday, at the end of the day, was quite sour to be honest. I think we're all getting a little bit tired and tetchy. With the water pump breaking, the uh, leak that we had, with some other issues, and then right at the end of the day, just as I was trying to calm down and find a bit of headspace, we heard a noise just as Phoenix came to bed. And we said, What's that noise? And I thought, Well, if it's not Phoenix, who is it? And I looked under the table, and Sammy was having a nice little munch on the wood for the second time. And that upset me so much, I had to leave the motor home for about five minutes and go and stand outside in the dark looking out to sea. There's nothing you can do though is there? So I uh, just wish Sammy didn't see Stampy as some giant dog biscuit. Right let's get this parking paid for and then we can have lunch before exploring the sites. I was just having a chat with Sammy about his eating habits, one of them being the furniture in Stampy, and we noticed his path as a cyclist went past. It's all reinforced but really thin. I suspect possibly just for cyclists along this cliff top path. How nice. And back over the hill there, oh, almost out of sight, is Stampy and Recolver Towers, which we shall visit later. Anyway, Sammy, you were saying. Well, the thing is, I thought it was a 
Well, it turns out that path, we're using the sign just back there, is actually an inland coastal path, encouraging everyone to stay away from the crumbling edge because there's nothing to stop you walking straight over the side of the cliff, apart from common sense, and we're not all blessed with that. It wouldn't be a B motorhome meal without a courgette, now would it? Hot. <laughs> Can you taste the arsenic? <laughs> Good. <laughs> We've just eaten our lunch. It was a bit like a pilaf, a bit like a biryani. I just made it up, but you saw all the ingredients, so it's quite nice. So I would give it a go. And looking forward to a little walk afterwards up towards the Roman fort, which you can't see because a lovely motorhomer has parked right next to us, despite there being several other spots. Thank you for protecting us. I think there's safety in numbers, isn't there? We've just been reading about a comedy series, actually, that we really enjoyed. Uh, it's called Here We Go. It's got Alison Steadman in. It's got the guy from Horrible Histories, who we love, and another fantastic lady. What's her name from the IT crowd? I think it's Catherine Parkinson. I'm not sure. But they filmed Pandemonium, the pilot episode, which became the series Here We Go. They filmed the pilot episode here at Reculver Fort um, because they were all very much not looking forward to their staycation after their California holiday was cancelled because of the pandemic and because the dad didn't want to bother buying holiday insurance because there was absolutely no way there was going to be a possibility of them not going on this holiday before they knew there was going to be a global pandemic. So that was filmed here, but it was also filmed in a tidal pool in Margate, which unfortunately we don't think we found. We saw a couple of them, but we didn't find it. But I thought I'd regale you with a tale I had earlier when I was walking around the harbour arm of Margate seafront. And I suddenly realised that I definitely needed to go to the toilet. I wasn't going to take him on a decent, a decent enough walk if I didn't find some sort of public toilet that I'd be able to take the dog into. Luckily, we saw those festival style portaloos, but he didn't want to come inside with me. Understandably, it was quite squashed. So I thought the best thing I could do was go inside, hold onto the lead with one hand and close the door. I kept calling to him and saying, checking he was OK and trying to be as quick as I could. And then suddenly I heard this lovely voice going, I'm just stroking your dog. And I, I could hear it was a lovely lady. And I said, oh, thank you so, so much. And then when I opened the door, it was, of course, a lovely uh, lady of a certain age giving him lots of attention. And that was really nice and thoughtful. And I said to her, I wouldn't normally do that. It was just that I was desperate. And she went, well, that's what they're there for. So thank you, Lady of Margate. That was very helpful for me and for Sammy. The twin towers of the medieval church dominate the skyline of Herm Bay. And on this site too, one of the earliest Roman forts was built to prevent Saxon raids in the third century. Coastal erosion means that much of the site has been lost, but in October 2023, a £1.1 million conservation project will begin. The site is free to enter, though there is a fee for parking. And on site, there is a cafe, a pub, some toilets and an amazing play park. years ago this would have all been water and that higher ground over there that was the Isle of Thanet. It's still called the Isle of Thanet but that's where we were. So this is the last little bit of the Roman fort which we think was 2,000 years old or it was AD 250 but just as we were coming in I've seen loads and loads of wild this it could be giant hobby but I think it's hemlock. Loads of hemlock all chopped down around where people are walking. This is a bit here I just wonder whether they need some signs or something because I can see some kids seeing these big purple sticks and breaking them up. It's really poisonous. So we're on the last leg of our journey now, aren't we? Well, almost the last leg, the penultimate leg of our journey. Yes, we're going to go and uh, meet an old friend of mine from the, my London days. Whitstable is famed for its seafood and is just five miles north of Canterbury. We managed to find a parking space on a suburban street and went and met Daz's friend. It was charming and buzzing in Whitstable. 
and we had a wander along the harbour side then purchased some pricey ice creams. He's really enjoying his ice cream. <laughs> right by Whitstable Seafront. The old black fishing sheds were now individual shops and it felt just like a nautical Christmas market. The narrow high street was filled with independent shops which was really refreshing and had we had more time we would have loved to have a peruse but we had to get back home. Colourful murals were spotted in many locations including this one of Peter Cushing, the famous actor who lived in the town for 35 years. We made it back to the motorhome just in time to have a little snack before our long journey back home. Well, it's Saturday evening. We've had three wonderful days in Kent on the Isle of Thanet. We've seen Whitstable and we've seen... Rikolva. Rikolva. And Margate and Broadstairs. Yes, and what an adventure we've had. And we could have given up on it several times because of all the problems that we've had in the motorhome. I'm so glad we stuck it out because we had a really lovely time on Whitstable Seafront. So, until our next escape, thanks for watching. <laughs>